Hello there. I'm David Kennedy Bird, the rector at Foundations Collegium. This is the fourth in an ongoing series of mini lectures on the importance of unity in a child's education. Uh, this particular one is called the Jigsaw Puzzle Analogy for reasons that will become apparent. In the opening lectures in this series, and I think it's going to run to about 15 probably total, but, but in, in these first few lectures, I've been sort of casting about for ways to illustrate the idea of unity, what it is, how it works, what it looks like. This is necessary because I think some people are confused about what unity actually means. They think that unity and diversity are opposites. You can only have one or the other. You can't have both unity and diversity. But this is a mistake. These people are confusing unity with uniformity. You're familiar with the idea of uniformity. Um, if something is of uniform texture, that means it's the same throughout. You know, all of it is the same. But that's not what unity means. Uniformity means sameness. Unity means it all fits togetherness. Here's an example of what we're talking about. Putting together a jigsaw puzzle. You've done this. You've, you've put together a jigsaw puzzle. I've done it hundreds of times. I love jigsaw puzzles. Um, so imagine that it's a 1,500-piece jigsaw puzzle. You know, you upend the box, you dump all 1,500 of the pieces out into a pile in the middle of the table. It's a mess. It's chaos. 1,500 pieces all just jumbled together all over the place. But what you know is that once the pieces have all been sorted out and you've figured out how they all connect together in the appropriate ways, there will be a unified picture. There will be a meaningful design uh, that will arise from the apparent chaos of all these 1,500 pieces that are just stacked. Unity and diversity are not opposites. They're complementary. 1,500 pieces, each of which is a different shape and has you know different colors and lines depicted on it, that's quite a bit of diversity. And yet, once you have fit them all together properly, it will be revealed that it's one meaningful picture that they all fit into. That's how unity and diversity work together. We could come up with you know, any number of examples. Let's say you're putting together a model clipper ship. Maybe you're not into ships. Maybe you're into race cars. It's a model race car or a model dinosaur or a model spacecraft. You know, and you've got all these plastic pieces or balsa wood pieces uh, that have to be fit together uh, in you know, intricate ways. Maybe they snap together. Maybe you have to glue them together. Um, and it's just this amazing mass of, of little pieces. But once they are all fit together in the right way, it'll be a unified end product. Let's say you're putting together a set of bookshelves um, guided by the strange directions that were written by someone for whom English was obviously not his first language. And this is always a fun challenge. But you know, you've got these different pieces and if you assemble them correctly you'll end up with a unified end product. Let's say you're playing a game of Monopoly. You open up the box and there's all this stuff in there. There's the playing pieces themselves. There's the little doggy and the hat and the cannon and the race car, you know. And there's the stack of cards, the community chest cards, the chance cards. There's the deeds to all the various properties. There's the little houses and the little hotels. And there's the, the playing board itself. A lot of stuff. And there's the money, all the, all the fake you know, Monopoly money. But out of this uh, amazing diversity of stuff, there is a unity. If you understand the rules of the game, it all makes sense. It's all part of something larger, something meaningful, something fun and entertaining. Let's say you're playing something else, not Monopoly, but a game of baseball. You know, you've got the bats, you've got the baseball itself, you've got the, the bases, you've got 
um, nine players arrayed about the field, and, and you know you've got all these other players over you know back here. Um, and someone who doesn't understand the rules of the game might say, "Well, what are all them fellers doing? Wow, wow! You got some of them standing out there in the field, and you got a bunch of them huddled uh, huddled together under that sheltered place over there. I don't understand. And why is that one feller trying to whack at the ball with that stick?" That's because this person doesn't understand the rules of the game. Uh, to him, it's just, it's a mess. It's just stuff happening everywhere and, and you know, people whacking at things with other things and someone's running over there, who knows why. But if you understand the rules, you, you know how all these different actions and people uh, and you know, the ball itself, how, how it all fits together into one meaningful, larger picture. Uh, playing a piece of symphonic music. You've got 100 musicians gathered on a stage playing a wide variety of different kinds of musical instruments, all guided by the same piece of music uh, under the direction of the same conductor, and it all fits together beautifully. But they're not all playing the same thing. They're all playing different things. I mean, they're all playing different melodic lines, and some of them may be playing in different, um, you know, different rhythms but it all fits together. What each musician is doing fits together with what all the other musicians are doing and the, the end result is something large and harmonic, something that exhibits a kind of grand design. That's how unity works. If we were to hark back to the previous lecture, the third one, Doctor, Lawyer, Indian Chief, we talked about how all the different parts of an automobile engine fit together. And, and make sense and work together. How the various parts of a corporation, all the offices and job descriptions and departments of a company all fit together into a larger whole. And we talked about um, how a member of the medical profession is able to understand all the different organs and systems of a human body as being parts of something larger, something incredibly complex an amazing, a mind-blowing amount of diversity within the human body. But that is not inconsistent with the unity that is the human body itself. I mean, you are one person. You are not billions of people just because you've got billions of components in your body. All of that diversity makes sense in terms of the one person that you are. Note that in each of these examples, unity and diversity are not opposites. They are complementary. Just like reality, just like the real world, all of this mind-blowing diversity that we're swimming around in is part of a larger picture. A unified cosmos which emerged from the mind of an infinitely powerful an infinitely creative and infinitely intelligent cosmic person. This is a unified cosmos that all fits together and makes sense. Now here's the punchline. If a kid can graduate from like 14 years of schooling without understanding this, without understanding that all the stuff he's been learning, all this diversity of stuff that he's been learning for the past 14 years, all fits together into one larger unified picture. If he doesn't get that, then something has gone desperately wrong with his education.